Welcome to Stone Cottage Adventures. This is where we ended up and this is where we started. The goal is to add a little more color and interest to this part of the shade garden. It looks really very pretty but there's not a lot of contrast. Um, I used the hostas with the variegated leaf kind of towards the front and these were pulled out of places in the yard and transplanted, thinned and transplanted and I thought they were all the same thing. Obviously the one there on the left is a little bit different. This one back here is not quite as variegated um, but you can see they kind of have the right effect but I need a little bit more. Now you probably don't see this very well because it doesn't contrast a lot in the rain. It is definitely sprinkling today. Our rain dance has been effective. This was an old stump found in the yard or a piece of a tree root or something and it is kind of a little playground for the ground squirrels and the birds. They love to sit on it and to climb under it which is really perfect because up above it is the bird feeder. So this is a very popular part of the garden for critters and I can sit inside at my chair and look out the French door and see this area so I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. Now what we're working with here is we have some hostas that are putting on some of those little pale lavender pinkish kind of blooms. This one bloomed earlier. Let's see if huh, you can see he's he spent and it's kind of messy with the, the rain. Um, some people cut off the flowers. I personally really like the flowers, but I think this could use a little more interest and a little bit tough tidying up. Now, um, I could have shown you how I rake it, but I think you know how to rake things. Anyway, I've, I've raked together. This is just the mess that's collected in the last week or so, and I'll scoop that up. And here's what I'm going to add. So I was at Home Depot, and usually this time of year, they have some annuals that maybe they overordered, and so they'll put them four for five dollars, and that's what these were. And I got um, a flat of them, which was twelve for fifteen dollars, and these are just a little impatience. Not the New Guinea impatience, just regular impatience. They're shade plant. The height is only 6 to 18 inches, so they're small. And I thought they would be nice tucked into my little shade bed here. Now, I have tried hostas before, and the critters trampled them. So I'm going to try to put these in a spot where they won't get trampled quite so badly. Now the one that looks like lettuce, that actually is a hookera, a light green hookera. And in this pot, there are three different colors. So you can see there's kind of a, an orangey red. And then there's this beautiful purple one with these dark veins. This is three hookera in the very same decorative sort of pot, if you like black plastic, uh, gray plastic. <laughs> I'll, I'll save that and maybe grow some things in it. But the individual hookeras at Home Depot were like $8.98 or something like that. But this one, this combination, I don't know exactly what the varieties are because it's just a hodgepodge, but the three of them together were $9.98, which means essentially I get one free one. And uh, those are the colors, so I get an assortment of colors and there's a part of me that wonders if, if I should go back and get some more of these because they're kind of interesting. And what I'm going to try to do is divide them because I think they're a little tight in there if they're going to go in the ground. And I'll set them back a little bit farther away from the dining area because the birds and the critters just definitely trample this. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, here we are after adding some planting and cleaning up, tidying things and planting a few things. Got the bench here with a little pillow on it. And there are my 
little white impatiens that I planted. Got three of those in there if you see them. And I divided, I decided to divide the hookeras rather than plant them. Um, and this one's the original gray pot that it was in. I love this one with that purple leaf and that deep vein, that deep colored vein. So pretty. I want him to get bigger. I figured if I had them in the pots, I could move them around until they were in exactly the right spot and they could spend the summer getting bigger. And here's the, the light green one, the chartreuse one that looks like lettuce to me. And there's that red one. And there's some impatience back here. And there are the blooms on the hosta. And there's our, our New Guinea impatience back in there. I think that turned out quite nicely. Now, the thing that's really interesting about this entire flower bed is um, the things that I purchased. Okay, I purchased the pot with all three hookahs in it for $19.98 this past week at Home Depot. I bought the little white impatience. Those were $1.25 a piece at Home Depot, kind of their clearance. And I bought uh, last year, the year before, this fern. And he is growing. He was kind of small. I think I got him for like three or four dollars. I think he came from Home Depot too. Not the world's greatest plant spot, but hey man, they had it. And I like that. It's uh, that tassel fern, I do believe. And uh, the only other thing I bought in here, this is, I've shown you this before, my original tassel fern that's probably five years old. And he is so pretty. Everything else was either here or, in the case of the hostas, they were transplanted. Every one of them was transplanted from somewhere else in the yard. Now, to give you an idea of what I transplanted, they, most of them, I'm going to pull this apart and let you see about the size of it. Now this one, I don't know if you can see that or not, but here we've got four leaves, four leaves. That was it. That is about what I transplanted. And now this plant could be divided into eight or ten plants, I'm sure. And every one of these was about that size, just nothing. And when we planted them, I wasn't even sure they were going to survive. Um, this plant back there, the, the one on the left-hand side, kind of in the center of the frame there, um, that was one of about... 10 plants that were all little. So if I start over here, here's one, two, three, four. Ah, there's another one back here. Five, six, seven. Here. This was one of the bigger ones, one of the bigger clumps. Seven over here. Then, over here, eight, that was one of the bigger clumps, too. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. All came out of the same little clump. Now, if you look right here, I didn't think this one would survive. So he unfortunately got put in front of a small hosta that I had divided off of another hosta. And I need to move this guy so that my little chartreuse one with the green edges will grow. He's not as tall as this guy is, so he needs to be pulled out, transplanted someplace else. I have no idea where. Anybody needs a hosta and lives in the DC area? Give me a holler, you can have a hosta. Big one. You can get a good five or ten plants out of that. So 
gardening is, is an interesting pastime because you don't need to spend an absolute fortune. Now, when I see gardening channels where they have access to unlimited plants, and they show up with a truck full of plants, and they plant what, in my opinion, is probably four or $500 worth of plants in one flower bed. We are close to the Pentagon, so that's a helicopter going overhead. So you always hear that. Um, but, you know, I can't spend four or $500 in one flower bed and put it, and those are just the annuals. And then they put the perennials in and, and that's crazy. I can't live like that. That just, that just does something to my insides to spend that kind of money. And, and I'm telling you, I can drop money at a plant store. That's one of my favorite pastimes. But what I love even better is getting free plants. That's what a garden is for. And that's what friends are for. I have passed along a lot of hostas to my neighbors. When I divide them up and I don't have any place to put them, I send them on their merry way. So get to know the gardeners, walk around your neighborhood, you'll find out real fast who does um, gardening. One of my favorite stories is there was a house on the corner and it was rented and it had been remodeled and the people that owned it lived out of the country. And um, the couple that lived there, she absolutely loved to garden, but she wasn't gonna spend a fortune on someone else's yard. So she went around with her little boy's red wagon, I kid you not, up and down the neighborhood making friends with everybody that gardened. She landscaped that entire yard with perennials and shrubs, um, roses, you name it. She found it, she stuck it in the ground. And by the time, I, I um, gave her a lot of garden flocks. She came and dug garden flocks out of the middle of my pathway that were, you know, ones that were not growing where they were supposed to grow. She took a, a gold strike, which is this bush here. She would dig them up the little volunteers from the bottom. And one day I saw a bunch of iris things. I don't know what you call those, but uh, it had a sign that said free. So I, but of course I picked them up and took them to her and she planted them in the yard. So she gardened and, and landscaped and it looked absolutely beautiful while she lived there um all for a budget i think the owners might have given her a little bit of money but not much everything else was just for free so look around whether it's seeds or cuttings or anything like that if you'd like to know how i divide things how i do cuttings that type of thing there are plenty of channels that do that but i'm happy to show you how i do it and how you can start off with nothing and this is the area that was trampled by the critters getting to the bird feeder and there was nothing growing there and in a very short period of time you can have a beautiful yard on a budget and you don't have to spend a fortune Thanks for coming along. I will see you next time.